the Arab Spring. Spring. Isn't that lovely? The sun's shining. Flowers are blooming, you know. All so lovely. And it makes people feel incredibly warm about it, so that when they poll on the Arab Spring, and they do poll on the Arab Spring, it never ceases to amaze me how many people think that it's a positive process. They say this is a process of renewal, rejuvenation. It doesn't look like it's me. <laughs> you know, and most of geopolitical experts say it's going to take two generations before it's anywhere near sorted. Western governments want to go and intervene in places like Syria. They can't do it because they can't win support. Maybe if we talked about it as an Arab inferno, people would feel differently about it. It's a different metaphor that fundamentally leads people to different outcomes. If you talk about the financial storm, was it really an act of nature or was it the fault of greedy bankers, timid regulators and scared politicians? You know, you might call it a financial crash, a financial heist, you know, and that might lead people towards you know, demanding more. This is the thing, metaphors speak to the instinctive. Some metaphors will represent safety. Others will make people scared. There's all sorts of metaphors that make people scared. George W. Bush consistently used fire metaphors during his presidency. Some metaphors will make people angry. And so the vermin metaphor that you see all over the place, the vermin metaphor which we know appeared in you know, the Second World War with the Jews described as snakes in the Rwandan conflict where the Tutsi were described as cockroaches. And this is, of course, why it was so controversial when David Cameron talked about a swarm of migrants um, at Calais. These are disgusting metaphors that lead people to think that they should be exterminated, this group of people should be exterminated. Ultimately, that's where the path leads. People don't think about them as human beings, particularly when reinforced with imagery over time. Rather, instead, they think of them as vermin to be dealt with. Some metaphors can rouse a, a, a feeling of disgust. And so if we talk now about the foul stench of betrayal that you have in the Labour Party at the moment, the foul stench, you might actually make a lip curl, you know? There's, um, when I sent my, the proofs of the book out to a, a few... Um, a few professors, like whilst I was writing it, and one of them was a professor of rhetoric who specialises in metaphor, and he scrawled at the top of the draft. He wrote, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wrote underneath it, this is a good metaphor too. <laughs> and he, he was actually absolutely right. And so you see that this is a metaphor, which is a common metaphor, which, of course, in France, you know, med, it works around the world. It's a common universal experience. We're instinctively programmed to stay away from the stuff. It's also very good for um, funny gags as well. And so you have the wonderful ones like... Um, is it Dennis Skinner? Dennis Skinner said uh, about Blair and Brown, they were two cheeks of the same arse, you know, <laughs> putting people in mind that the whole New Lager project was shit. You know, you, you had, um, what was the other one? Boris Johnson talks about how Ed Miliband emanated from the bowels of the trade union movement, saying Ed Miliband was shit. And just recently, Pope Francis, <laughs> of all people, was talking about the dung heap of capitalism, you know, saying that capitalism was shit, you know. And so you can see how powerful this kind of metaphor is. Of the, the, these are metaphors that make, you know, are designed to speak to the instinctive mind and say, stay away from this thing. Of course, you have other metaphors that say, come here, you know, and the best one of these is, of course, the human, the human being. And so this is why the metaphor of personification is so, so, so powerful, whether or not you're talking about, you know, the heart of the company, about the way the company looks out to the future or is reaching out and grasping opportunities. These are great, great metaphors. And research, fMRI, imaging, brain imaging, shows that when you use these words like reaching out and grasping opportunities, the part of the brain that deals with those actions literally lights <coughs> up. And so you're literally getting into people's heads when you use this kind of language. So these are great metaphors.